The Mike Isretel PhD drama so far has contained precisely zero surprising twists or turns. This was so predictable. When I made a YouTube on Mike Isretel's PhD a year ago, just a YouTube short, I thought to myself, should I make a full long form video on this? And I thought, no, someone else will do it. It will come out eventually that this guy's a fraud. So I didn't bother. So now that happens. And then Mike, we all know Mike Isretel is going to have some PR move. And he's going to come out and lie. And in order to do that, because his PhD has no credibility, he leans on another PhD, Dr. Milo Wolf. Well, I already covered his study six months ago in a YouTube. Okay, like how much credibility does that guy have when his study is so absurd? Now understand, I don't pay attention to YouTube fitness content. I'm not following all these different dramas, so I don't know who a lot of these people are. Or if I do, it's just because I've read the scientific journals and read their stuff. So when I came across that study by Milo Wolf, I didn't know it was funded by Jeff Nippard until I got to the bottom and said, oh, funded by Jeff Nippard. That's interesting. So that's why I decided to cover it. So I'm reading the comments sections and stuff, and I'm seeing people say, the reason why I trusted Mike Isretel is because he studied under Michael Stone. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Who's this Michael Stone guy? Turns out, I wrote an article or an essay a while ago. I uploaded it to ResearchGate. And I reread it recently and realized, oh, I've referenced this stone. Yeah, spurious arguments. Stone, that was the reference. That article that had got published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning had been up for like a year and got zero citations because nobody actually cares what this guy says in the scientific community. So I was the first guy to give them a citation. So some co-author gets excited and they're like, oh, Someone cited us. Let's see what he has to say. Spurious arguments. Stone. And I didn't know who Stone was at this time, right? So thanks ResearchGate for having that function where it alerts you and tells you when someone read your work and tells you who it is because that gave me a good fucking laugh, I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 now, because I actually want people to read my work and evaluate it on the merit, I've uploaded this essay to ResearchGate and I've put a link in the description. But I'll just read you the end part now. I implore the medical community outside of the sports science sphere to study resistance training and strength development without any reference to that which has come before starting anew without being influenced by the unscientific theories that are foundational to exercise science. Steel et al. Now what is Steel et al? Steel et al. is yet another predictable drama that happened. James Steele, James Fisher and some co-authors wrote a chapter in a book called The Myth of Periodization. They're pointing out the obvious. That should be just prima facie obvious to anyone who knows what science is, and that is, periodization is not science. So anyone who's trying to evaluate Dr. Mike Isretel's credentials when he says exercise scientists react to blah 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 as if his opinion on absolutely everything is authoritative, you only need to read his channel name, Renaissance Periodization. Periodization isn't science. This guy's not a scientist. Good day, sir. You get nothing. You lose. I'm not going to waste my time watching this guy's channel. Starting anew without being influenced by the unscientific theories that are foundational to exercise science, steel et al., or the spurious arguments that defend them, stone et al. As for my current resistance training, I currently do one set for each exercise once every six weeks, with every exercise being an isolation exercise. 
This is a regime that sports scientists will no doubt find ridiculous, hence will not have tested at all. Therefore, their uninformed opinion really doesn't matter to me. I choose to base my training plan on a hypothetical deduced by reason rather than empirical evidence. Some will say this is unscientific, but the scientific method begins with a hypothesis, a hypothetical, not currently existing empirical evidence. If my training differs from the quote-unquote scientific consensus, it is because I am engaging with the scientific method. How am I going to respond to any of this drama? I'm not going to respond to it. I'm just going to go do some real science. Because this is an opportunity. See, what you have to understand is that someone like a Mike Isratel, they take all the oxygen out of the room. They prevent real scientists from having a voice. Well, now that that house of cards is crumbling down, now's the time to do some science. Now, I've already done EMG stuff, which I've uploaded. I'm planning to do a much better, more organized thing, because I just turned up and just impromptu did that EMG stuff. So stay tuned.